light your scene, position your talent as needed, white balance and focus. Make sure with the lights that you mark down their distances and also if there were any filters applied and also how high they were because those that information is going to come become helpful to you when you have to reenact that lighting on green screen. Add the markers for the eye lines and also practice timing. Since we had to shoot our green screen on a separate day, it's best to shoot a reference pass. Have your talent stand in with his wardrobe and props to see exactly what he was wearing and how he was wearing it. How many buttons was up, what hand his watch was on, what hand he was holding the gun in, also whether or not the necklace was in or out of the shirt, those small details. A perspective pass is necessary. Have the talent move around the scene, in front of the mirror, everywhere within your frame so the compositor has a reference on the sizes and reflections throughout the scene. Now on the green screen, of course you're going to light your green screen, position your talent as set for the reflection. You're going to white balance and focus. Now what's important on the green screen is make sure the talent changes his accessories because if he's holding the gun in the right hand in the foreground it's going to have to be left in the background, in the reflection. The watch and the ring are also going to all have to be changed. Everything is backwards in the reflection. Light the scene with the position and distance information you collected from shooting the background plate. Now set your eye lines and positions and movement markers on both the floor and walls. Have your actor practice the timing and movement and eye lines for the shot. It's best to even do a practice run and even shoot the practice run to do a quick rough composite. It's also at this point you could do an export or even a rough composite to see what minor changes you can make to the shot. One of the biggest things when working with a reflective prop such as a gun is to watch for the reflections of the green screen that spill onto the gun because when you get into compositing it will remove the gun will be removed with the green screen background things that you can do to reduce this green reflection is to angle the gun certain directions or even add a light source that reflects the light instead of the green now in this particular composite I didn't even create separate compositions when working on this shot if you understand how layering works and you don't get confused it is possible to bypass the step that we used in agent smith duplication if you would like a more complex outline for your mask, you can use the pen tool to create more points that you can manipulate and actually create curves. Background plate, of course, is always going to be at the bottom. Now from there, you'll place your reflection shot that you shot on green screen, set your garbage mat up, or your mat mask, to remove any unwanted objects that are in your scene or unlit green screen. Of course, apply your green screen key, your spill removal, and your edge blur. From there you will line up your green screen and even size it with the actual natural reflection. Once you get as close as you can to the natural reflection and from there you will time the eye line and the gun movement. Do a test export. It's best to do this now before all the other effects are applied. From there, once you are satisfied with the timing, you'll take a clean plate and wipe out everything that's in the mirror. Now when you create a clean plate, you don't want to wipe out the whole shot. You just want the clean plate to take out the mirror. It's always best to blend a mat on a line in the scene or in your frame. So we use the threshold on the mirror as our blending point. Now when compositing this particular shot, you must remove all the reflections and natural shadows that are in the mirror. The reason for that is if we leave natural shadows, when we have our reflection come out of the mirror. We're trying to blend digital shadows with the real, so it's very time-consuming to do that. It's better to just replace them and have all digital shadows that you can control. After we take all the reflections and the original shadows out, we now have just our green screen character against a white background, so we need to start adding our shadows back. There's somewhat of a foreground shadow that spills in through the mirror. That you'll just duplicate your original background plate but mask out everything except that particular shadow. From there, you're going to have a very hard edge. So you add matte feather, and it will feather it in and blend it to the shot a lot better. Now we need to create a shadow for our, our talent in the reflection. What you will do is duplicate the reflection pass and apply radial shadow. With that effect, you tell the software where you place your key lights, and it will create, it will project a reflection onto the wall. You can change the color of that shadow by sampling other shadows in the image. You can also control the softness and even projection distance. Now when we sampled a certain color to change our radial shadow, it projected a weird color onto the carpet, so we created a mat that cut off his legs. And basically the mat was only projecting onto the shadow, not the actual uh, foreground layer. 
Now we want his shadow to actually move behind the foreground, uh, foreground shadow we created. If it goes over it, it will actually double up and actually become darker and also disappear after our, after our uh, threshold at the mat. So we want it to just totally disappear behind the shadow as if the shadows were canceling each other out. To do so, you must have your, your foreground shadow mat that we created before the character shadow on top, on the top layer. If you have your character shadow above the other one, you will notice instantly because it will overlap each other and actually become darker. To add the ripple effect as the talent walks through the mirror, you are going to duplicate the reflection pass once again. You'll place that one on the very top. And what you'll do is trop and crimp that down to only the point that he is walking through the mirror. You don't need it the same duration as the other one. From there, hide the top layer and work on your ripple effect on your bottom layer. To determine how large you would like the ripple to get, I would create another composition and practice that. Once you get your properties set, you can then bring them into the final composite and keyframe them to start from nothing to 11, like I found out that 11 worked for me. And then also by the time he exited the mirror, it would come back down to zero again. And I placed it in two spots, at the edge of his gun and at the edge of his knees, because those are the first two points that are coming through the mirror first. And from there, once you have your ripples keyframed in and set, you will then take your top layer, you're going to slowly reveal his gun, his knees, and you're going to work his head in, then you're going to work his body. So it's eventually slowly unveiling his whole body until he's fully out of the mirror. This is a difficult shot or effect to accomplish even for an experienced compositor. A lot of small adjustments were made to make this thing look right, but still it's almost a frame by frame process. You have to do quite a bit of keyframing and animation to make this look correct. Now we also created rounded edges on our mat. If you were wondering how to create the rounded edges on the mat, you would where your pen tool is, you hold that button down and there's going to be an arrow without a tail on it. That particular tool, instead of moving a hard edge, it creates a rounded circle. And we want to use rounded circle because the ripple is actually a rounded surface. The second ripple, of course, was added to the knee. It also enlarges to about the same size as the ripple that started at the gun and then eventually disappears. Very similar effects, but still each ripple is treated individually and keyframed individually. Once you are satisfied with all the positioning, the properties, and the effects on your mirror shot, you will then refollow the same steps we did on the Agent Smith duplication. You'll create another final composite and also use the brightness and contrast if there's any final color corrections. But basically, this is the point where we add the denoiser. Remember, if you add too much to the denoiser, if you remember, if you add too much property levels to the denoiser, you will get unwanted artifacts and motion blurs that were originally not in the image. So keep the property settings low and you'll find a result that is satisfying.